Hi and welcome everybody. My name is Pavan Shankar and I'm on the product marketing team here at Dome 9 Security, which is now part of Checkpoint Software. Today we will demo a live hack of an AWS account by performing a man in the middle attack. Normally this would occur via intercepting the user session credentials, but today we will go beyond that and actually I will show you how you can bypass your two-factor authentication. So if you're using an MFA like Okta or Ping, you are not necessarily safe. So before we dive into the demo, let's start with a bit of context. So the tool that we are leveraging here today is called Evil Genix 2. It's a man-in-the-middle attack framework that allows you to bypass your two-factor authentication. And it's really intercepting your HTTP traffic. This was built by a security researcher and is available for use on GitHub. It is very customizable using something called fishlets, which are essentially YAML files of any website that you would like to fish. Uh, Evil Genix actually comes out of the box with uh, fishlets for popular sites such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and so on. So you can use the tool and actually see how a, an attack would occur on any one of those websites. For the purposes of this demo, I've actually created a custom fishlet for the AWS signing page. So essentially, Evil Genix is a web phishing server and performs a few key things. So number one, it is the web server that hosts the uh, malicious uh, phishing server. It also acts as a DNS resolver. So Evil Genix is, ho in this example, it's hosted on my AWS account, has a public IP that is associated with a, uh, do a phishing domain that I have secured for free called AWS console.tk. And Evil Genix actually does the resolution. And <clears throat> finally, it also provides the SSL certificate. Uh, basically, the bad side here will show a valid cert using Let's Encrypt. So it goes out and grabs that certificate for you. So let's talk a little bit about the attack chain, and how this would work. So basically, a victim is phished, perhaps via an email that they're sent, uh, 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 making it look like it's coming from AWS. And unsuspectingly, the victim clicks one of the links to sign in and they're sent to a malicious domain which is linked to this phishing server. Now, and everything from that point on is being monitored and intercepted. So Evil Genix pretty much acts as a man in the middle attack and presents the victim with an identical uh, web page. So it's when I mean identical, it's actually the AWS page that's rendering in real time. And any input that the user uh, applies, such as username, password, uh, it is captured and sent to the actual site to log in. And once uh, MFA is, if MFA is enabled, uh, you know, once the user inputs their MFA token, the session is validated, and that session token is what's captured by Evil Genix. So let's actually jump into the demo and actually walk through an, a live hack of this. So <clears throat> before I jump into my email, let me just show you the the web server. This is on my EC2 instance, so I'll log into that. So you can see here Evil Genix, and it loads up with the existing uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and also the Fishlet for AWS, you can see here. AWS is right here. So now, <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to my email, and say I get this email, AWS, welcome to AWS from Amazon Web Services, I click this link, and you can see here, it looks like it comes from AWS, but this Gmail account, you know, I've created a separate one for this demo, uh, but a hacker can be a lot more sophisticated. And this email actually looks identical to an AWS email asking you to get started. So I click this link, and it takes me to the sign-in page of, a of AWS. Now, a couple of things here. This looks identical because it actually is rendering the actual AWS page. And you can see here, this is the URL, signing.aws.com, and I have that malicious, the phishing domain uh, as part of this uh, URL. Uh, and I've tried to make it as uh, crafty as possible, but you know, just since it's a free domain, it's, it was a little bit hard to do that, but you get the idea. And finally, this session is secure because of that Let's Encrypt certificate. So it prompts me to, you know, at this point, enter my uh, username or account ID, and I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, but just to show you, I have, from, from a hacker's perspective here, 
I can see that a new visitor has arrived on this uh, phishing server. So I'll go ahead and uh, start to log in. So let's log in with my AIM role here. Now it prompts me to enter my account ID. So I will. Okay, and I will log in with my username and password. And as I log in, you see here that um, it's intercepted by username and password. Now, you can say, hey, this is cool, but um, what about the MFA? So, and if I have MFA turned on, I have that you know last level of protection for exactly these kinds of scenarios. So, I have turned on MFA, and it prompts me to enter my MFA code and have Okta Verify on my phone, which generates a one-time password. And I'll go ahead and input that fairly quickly. So now I say <clears throat> enter, and on the phishing server, you can see that it says all authorization tokens are intercepted. So it doesn't really matter, you know, what MFA I use, whether I use Okta or Ping or how many levels of, you know, two-factor authentication that I have implemented. It really captures that session token once uh, you your session has been validated, and that's what's being uh, used to access your AWS account. So now, from a hacker's perspective, I have everything I need to hack into your account. So I say sessions, and I see the session that has been captured. And I can actually go into that specific session here. And you can see that it says tokens captured. And this blob, JSON blob here, is essentially that session cookie. Now, I just need to copy this. And I'll open up uh, Firefox, another browser, and go into Amazon. <clears throat> Now, just to show you that I'm not cheating here, I will try and log in to make sure that I can't. It, it asks me to sign in. So let's go back here. And now, on Firefox, I have installed a cookie editor. So this allows me to, to modify the cookies. So I'll delete all of the existing cookies here. and then import what I had copied from the phishing server and click import. Now, if I click sign in, voila, I'm in your AWS account. Now, at this point, you should be freaking out because I have pretty much logged into an, into an IAM user's account and now I'm free to do anything that I want. If I'd like to go spin up uh, EC2 instances to mine Bitcoin, I can do that. I can go delete, uh, you know, make Route 53 changes in your environment to take your DNS down. I can do a lot of things, right? So how can we prevent such an attack from happening? So best practice would be to ensure that you're locking down your uh, IAM services and the operations in, in your AWS account and only really allowing access to that on an on-demand perspective. So just-in-time access would be uh, one good way to ensure that if an attack like this would happen, uh, you are still protected. Because as you see, a lot of times you have a false sense of hygiene using uh, MFA or two-factor authentication, but if that layer is breached, then really the hacker has full access to your database account and really the keys to the kingdom. So really locking those the most sensitive operations down and only opening it up for uh, a specific period of time is a good way to ensure the safety of your AWS account. So one of the ways you can do that is by using Dome9's uh, Dome IAM Safety uh, product. So let me just go here and quickly show you. So as it logs in, as it, log it pulls up the IAM Safety, it's really a, uh, this is for your AWS account and it provides an additional layer of a defense on top of the, the native IAM capabilities and really uh, allows on-demand timed authorization into your AWS uh, for your, some of your sensitive operations in AWS and really allows you to make sure that access is restricted and only the right uh, levels of uh, users and IAM roles can access those services.
So hopefully you found this video uh, helpful and uh, gotten a better understanding of how this attack could occur and how to stay protected. Thank you for watching and have a great day.